Hi. <clears throat> Hi. My name is Alexis Aguirre. I'm a second grade dual language teacher at Encanto School in downtown Phoenix. This morning, I gathered up my second grade students in a community circle to explain why their teacher would not be at school tomorrow. We do community circle each week and share our triumphs, our losses, and our hopes. And we start with a hug and we share the practice, tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other me. And when I look into the eyes of my students that I serve, this phrase goes straight to the heart of why I am choosing to walk out for my students. Just like the seven-year-old children in my classroom, I too have lived through the foster care system, food insecurity, homelessness, abuse, and poverty. But my students are resilient. They are kind and they are courageous. They come to school with a bright smile on their face every day, ready to work hard. And they know that I will be proud of them as long as they try their best. And now it's time for us to do our best for them. Over the last 10 years, educators have been told to take on more work, increase class sizes with reduced resources. And we have complied, creating workarounds, even if that's meant spending our own time and money to, des to create the classrooms that our education system deserves, that our students deserve. And aren't Arizona children as deserving of a quality public education as other children across America? I know that my students, my son, and my baby girl deserve the exact quality education that other kids get all across the United States. As a parent and educator, I can no longer remain silent to the tragic inequities that our students face under this education funding crisis. I can no longer make excuses for the state of Arizona, to families who send their children to us with the full hope and expectation that we're going to do right by them. I cannot allow my fifth grade son to continue another six years in underfunded schools. We've presented state lawmakers the harsh reality of what our schools are facing and plenty of time to give us a real solution but they continue to use our schools as political pawns in this election year. So if state lawmakers are not going to make real change for our students, then we will. I've told my students that tomorrow I will be marching to the Capitol and advocating for them and all school staff, and I will not be standing alone. Parents have offered their encouragement and implored us not to settle for an election year gimmick that does nothing to help their students. Although our decision was a difficult one, it is an action that we take very seriously and is in response to a very serious inaction by our state lawmakers. We know that our decision is the right one. As I witness families, voters, and community members standing alongside us at our walk-ins, rallies, and protests, tomorrow you will see an entire community standing up for students and educators, demanding fully funded schools for our kids in preschool all the way to high school, now and for future generations of Arizona students. Thank you. Now I'm going to present to you Noah Carvelis, leader of the Arizona Educators United Movement, music teacher at Littleton Elementary. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for being here today. I can tell you today is one of the hardest days in my teaching career so far. My first day was challenging. I've had challenging students, I've had challenging weeks, challenging months. Today by far tops it all. There's nothing harder than, than taking this action as an educator. And saying goodbye for the weekend right now and, and talking with my, my uh, fellow educators and especially my students and explaining this action was, was nothing but difficult. But I think our students understand, my students certainly do, that we need a change. And enough is enough, and we, we simply can't take it any longer. We can't continue to let our schools be underfunded. We can't continue to let educators who have devoted their entire careers to serving our community force out of a job. And I think our students understand that. 
and our community understands that. And with the action that we're taking tomorrow, we're proving that educators all across this state understand that. So right now, while it's difficult to take this next step, I'm nothing but confident that we will bring a change that is necessary for this state and that the people at the legislature for too long have refused to bring. So as I've said before, if they can't get it done, we'll get it done ourselves and we'll continue to take these actions and we'll continue to escalate because we need answers and we need a change for this state. And so now I would like to ask everyone, if we don't stand up for our kids right now, who will? Now I'm gonna introduce Maricel Garcia, fantastic educator, fantastic parent, and the Vice President of Arizona Education Association. Marisol. Good afternoon, my name is Marisol Garcia, and I'm a middle school educator, social studies educator here in the Isaac School District. But today I wanted to speak to you about my most important role, and that's the role as a mother of a sixth grader in the Roosevelt School District. Um, I'm reminded of when I was a fifth year teacher and my son was starting kindergarten, and I filled out paperwork regarding free and reduced lunch. And despite the fact that I had secondary degrees, despite the fact that I was 38 years old, despite the fact that I was great at my job, my son was able to qualify for free and reduced lunch. And it was the most humiliating, embarrassing moment of my life as a young single mother to know that my son, who I had worked so hard to provide for, was eligible for this because of the inadequacy of pay in this state. I know there are thousands of mothers and fathers today who are worried about what they're going to do tomorrow, but I want them to know that we are doing what we are doing tomorrow, walking out for their students, for my son and for his friends. This was very difficult. And this morning when I dropped off my son at school, we had a conversation about what was going to happen and what his teachers could potentially say. And he knows, as a son of a teacher, that we give up all the time. I am not able to take them to the movies. We're not able to go to vacations the way that other families are because I spend a lot of my extra money to provide for my students. My son is proud of his mother. My son is proud of his teachers. My son will be doing homework the next few days because he knows that his education does not stop but that his teachers are fighting for him and he will continue to do his work. I'm very proud to be joining my colleagues tomorrow, but I'm even prouder to represent my son and lift my voice with thousands of colleagues down at the Capitol. I now get to introduce Joe Thomas, president of AEA. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Thomas. I'm a social studies teacher, most recently from Mesa, and I proudly serve as the president of the Arizona Education Association. I'm proud to represent its 20,000 members here and work uh, side by side with NOAA and the leadership team of the Arizona Educators United. Um, tomorrow is going to be difficult. And you've heard three teachers that have described in their own mind the difficulties associated with it. But what would be much more difficult to do is to stay in our schools and finish out the year in the same status quo that hurts our students every single day. For 10 years, we've waited for the legislature and the governor to restore funding. For 10 years, we've waited for action. We've not seen anything. We've always been told there's not enough money. After tax cuts, and tax cuts year after year after year, the legislature has ignored our pleas for better schools. And tomorrow, we will lift our voices in a way that they cannot ignore. And so the hardest thing for some of our educators to do will be walking out of their classrooms right about now and not returning to them until we have better schools guaranteed for their students. But that is the right fight, and it is born of the same part of their soul that makes them want to go back to school every year in a state that underfunds them intentionally and makes it much more difficult to teach and, make their, and help their students advance to the next grade. So we have um, a fight in front of us, and we want the parents to understand that this fight is for your child. Children that I will never see, I will never know, but I know that our fight tomorrow is for them so we bring better schools so that the rest of their education career is better than what they received this year. That's what we're doing. And so as you've walked into schools with us over the past several Wednesdays, and you've stood with us in this principled fight, we ask that you stand with us, either down at the Capitol or in spirit, as we walk into the people's house and demand change 
for all of our students. That's what this fight is about. Regardless of what the governor says, regardless of what the legislators say, this is a fight for every single one, the 1.1 million Arizona students in this state that deserve better schools than what the legislature provides and to serve real educational opportunity. That's why we're in this fight. and That's what's going to happen tomorrow and Friday and into next week until we get the results that we demand for our students. At this point, I want to introduce a very special guest to Arizona, um, a former elementary educator from Utah and the current president of the National Education Association, Lily Eskelson Garcia. Um, 